Time of the gentleman's expired. Senator Sanders. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Welcome, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we have spent a lot of time in Congress talking about the $700 billion TARP bailout, which I voted against as it happens. Not a whole lot has been talked about uh, with regard to the $2.2 trillion that the Fed has lent out. Mm -hmm. Now, I find that absolutely extraordinary uh, that I wrote you a letter and I said, hey, who'd you lend the money to? What were the terms of those loans? How can my constituents in Vermont get some of that money? Who makes the decisions? Do you guys sit around in a room? Do you make it? Are there conflicts of interest? So my question to you is, will you tell the American people to whom you lent $2.2 trillion of their dollars, will you tell us who got that money and what the terms are of those agreements? We, ex we explain each of our programs. In terms of the terms, we explain the terms exactly. We explain what the collateral requirements are. We explain what to the whom did you explain are. that? It's, it's on our website. Yeah. Okay. So all that information is available uh, in our commercial paper. And program. who got the money? Hundreds and hundreds of banks. Any bank or that has uh, access to the U.S. Uh, Federal Reserve's discount. You tell us who they are. No, because the reason that is counterproductive and will destroy the value of the program is that banks will not come to the business. Well, isn't that too bad? Sorry? In other words, isn't that too bad? They took the money, but they don't want to be public about the fact that they received it. We heard a whole lot about AIG. They're on the front pages. These are very now, I got banks and I have businesses in the state of Vermont who are in a lot of trouble. Not banks. Our banks, by the way, are doing pretty well. Now, how do these guys who are honest business people get it? Do you have to be a large, greedy, reckless financial institution to apply for these monies? There is no subsidy. There is no capital involved. There is no gift involved. It is a collateralized, short-term liquid loan that is both over-collateralized and is recourse to the company itself. We have never lost a penny doing it. And how can other institutions make, get, get uh, those loans as well? According to the law, we are supposed to be lending to depository institutions. We've well, been... Let me just say this, Mr. Chairman. I have a hard time understanding how you have put $2.2 trillion at risk uh, without uh, making those names available, those institutions public. And we're going to introduce legislation today, by the way, to demand that you do that. It is unacceptable to me that that goes on. Um, Mr. Chairman, um, one of the untold, uh, one of the issues that bothers me very much is that for many, many years, some of us were concerned about deregulation. Some of us were very concerned about where the economy was going. We didn't hear much coming from the Bush administration who told us over and over again that the fundamentals of the economy were sound. We didn't hear much from the Fed. Now, looking back, do you think that maybe there was a problem there that you did not raise some alarms out there and said, we got a problem when trillions of dollars are being floated around the world in a deregulated, non-transparent way. When you heard people talking about the fundamentals of the economy being sound, how come you didn't raise an alarm? Well, there was a, a massive credit crisis, and it's been true that our regulatory system and our financial supervisory system did not succeed in preventing those impacts. And I think it's very important that did we... not succeed in preventing them. Let's take it another way. Do you think that the repeal of Glass-Steagall was a tragic mistake? Uh, no, I don't think so. Uh, but I do think we need to have much more effective uh, holding company and oversight uh, supervision. And I strongly support uh, a, a strong program of regulatory reform going forward. Mr. Chairman, in my state, people ask me how it could be that you're providing loans at almost zero interest rates to large financial institutions who are then charging consumers 25 or 30 percent interest rates on their credit cards. Do you think that that's acceptable, or do you think that those institutions that are receiving uh, help from the Fed should substantially cut those interest rates? Well, with respect to credit cards, um, we've been working actively in that area in a couple of dimensions. One is that uh, uh, credit card credit availability will be enhanced by our TALF program, which I've just no, announced. I, but you're not answering my question. Mm -hmm. Should a financial institution that is being bailed out by taxpayers charge those taxpayers 25 or 30 percent interest rates when they're receiving? Well, you need to address that to the Treasury because it's the TARP that's providing 
help to failing or damaged uh, firms. The Federal Reserve lends to healthy firms on a collateralized basis. Last by question. Liquidity. Last question. Many, again, of my constituents, and I think people all over this country, are wondering why the CEOs of these large financial institutions who have been extremely greedy, reckless, and maybe have engaged in illegal behavior have not been fired so that we can work with people who want to really reform the system. Should the CEOs of the financial institutions that have led us into this deep, deep recession be fired? Well, pay and, and job tenure should depend on performance, and those which have performed poorly should lose their jobs. Are any of them who have been? Many have lost their jobs. Yeah, most of them, of the major guys, are still holding their positions. Senator Alexander. 